the Guinness World Records. One of the stalwarts, one of the mainstays of the publishing industry. Every year we can count on Guinness World Records coming up with a book filled with the most fascinating, mind-boggling records known to mankind. And this year they have come out with it again. Through all of the hot mess that has been the year 2020, they have come out with the 2021 edition of the Guinness Book of Records. And I picked it up, read it, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on it right now. So starting off with the trivia and the publishing info, this is the 65th edition of the Guinness World Records dating back to 1955. It was published in 2020, obviously. It is 243 pages long, 256 if you include the acknowledgements, index, glossary, etc. It is 30 US dollars and 35 Canadian dollars, and it is made up of 12 major sections. The solar system, natural world, animals, humans, against the clock, which is a section where it's all about timed records. So what you can do in 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, etc. Record mania, just a bunch of random records. Culture and society, adventurers, technology, gaming, pop culture, and sports. So the main positives, the highlights of this edition is that it's very informative and covers a broad array of subjects and topics. This is something that we've come to expect with every one of the Guinness Book of Records, regardless of which one you pick up, you're not going to put it down without learning at least like a few new things about the world and about the things that people do. It provides a lot more than the basics by going into unusual and unexpected records for each of these 12 sections and subsections. But what I mean by that is that whatever section they have, they will provide more records than what you expect. So instead of giving like just the oldest man or the oldest woman or the largest pizza slice or something like that, they will give you more than that. They will give more than what you thought you paid for by giving some of the most, like I said, mind boggling records known to mankind. They really are informative and it's always a blast to read through one of these. Now, not everything about this book is sunshine and rainbows. And one of the things that I don't like about this book is the Hall of Fame feature that is introduced. Basically, it is a one or two page column of one famous person or thing pertaining to each of the 12 sections. And the reason why I don't like, I don't know, I'm just not very interested in it. I feel like it's unnecessary, it kind of diverts from the actual point of it, which is a records book. I mean, if people wanted to know about them, they could look up a biography or something. But I understand where they were going with this. It was a well-intentioned idea. I just think that the execution could have been a little better. They could keep it, just fine tune it, tweak it, make it better for the next edition of the book. The cover design, um, it's not a bad design, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying this is bad. This is a very intricate design. I think it's something related to a, a park of some sort, the Guinness World Record Adventure, I think is what it is. Something related to that, and it was drawn by a very talented artist. I don't know, I mean, covers in the past have had designs like, you know, this holographic design or reflective or something like that. None of that here, but it couldn't be because, you know, it's 2020 production and all of that. Maybe they thought of doing something like that, they just couldn't because of supply chain limits and whatnot. And I feel like the book, because of you know all the sections and all the things that it has to cover, spread itself too thin. And this is something that's very common among Guinness World Record books. You are never felt completely satisfied with what you want. You know, there's always just a little bit of everything. And sometimes that leaves the reader empty. You know, like I'm a basketball head, like you know, and also some other sports as well. There's one page devoted to basketball. It's a bit short for my liking, but again, I'm sure that there are basketball records books out there. There's always basketball reference if you want to check up statistics and stuff like that. I get that they need to cover everything since this is a general reference book, but you know, I feel like it did spread itself a bit thin here. And that's about it for the review, you know? It's a pretty standard Guinness World Record book. It's nothing too crazy or nothing like that. A, lot, a bit of normalcy in what has been a year of anything but normal. It nails the basics. Could have been a little bit more uh, out of the box, but again, it is 2020. There's not really that much that they could do. It's really impressive that they were even able to come out with a book anyway. And they said that in the introduction itself, if you read it for yourself. And I will give this one a seven out of 10, a solid seven. And it's not anything bad. It's, it's a very, very solid 
book. It's a very enjoyable read, and of course, like I said, you're never going to end or finish a Guinness World Records book without learning at least a few new things about the world, the people in it, and the things that people do. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.